Hey, how's it going, folks? This is Phyllis from NYYNews.com. Well, we have seen recently the Arizona Diamondbacks signed a relief picture to a minor league deal, Fernando Salas. What does this mean? This means that the Diamondbacks, as we have been saying, are interested in relief pictures. In particularly, they are interested in a closer. People are saying, oh, that's it. They signed Fernando Salas. I mean, look at the dates, January 22nd. I mean, all that time, and he just got signed by a small market team. He isn't going to be that effective. It's just for stacking up their bullpen. So, again, at this point, I say, forget about you, Darvish. They're waiting way too long. If you ask me, they're stalling the Yankees. MLB teams are taking their time because they know at any minute, second, the Yankees can make a big splash. So, you Darvish is taking his time, just forget it. Forget about him. Let's uh, move to other alternatives. Like uh, Pete Samanetti of the Samanetti source said, the Yankees might trade with the Atlanta Braves for young pitchers. This was mentioned by Buster Only, like, uh, maybe close to a week ago. But Pete picked it up. Once you hear things like, say, it went down over a week ago, that means they're still in talks. Just like I said, the Red Sox were inquiring about Manny Machado. I said, guaranteed, Cashman is also talking to the Orioles about Manny Machado. And then, boom, a week later, it's confirmed. So... Realistically, the Yankees, their best trade alternative is with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Here are the positives and upsides of trading with the Arizona Diamondbacks. You save money not going after Darvish. The contract you were going to give you Darvish. You save and also dump salary let's say, by trading a Patances or Robertson to the Diamondbacks. You have all that money for 2019. You have so many alternatives. You get a player back like Corbin. Or if you want to get really creative, you do a three-way trade with the Baltimore Orioles and also solve your third base issue. So there's a lot of positives of not signing a U Darvish and just going and getting a picture like Corbin. Yes, he's going to become a free agent right after. But let's say if he is legit or subpar or whatever, he might be affordable for a fifth or fourth starter in your rotation. Also, CC Sabathia, who knows if he's coming back. Corbin might be a good alternative, still young, and he has one of the best sliders in the game. So the negative part, like I said, you only signed Corbin for a year. I mean, you traded for Corbin for a year. Uh, the negatives also include that you traded young prospects to the Diamondbacks. And then again, I forgot to mention the other positive of dealing with the Diamondbacks. You get rid of Jacoby Ellsbury. Yes, players, center fielders or outfielders are getting like $5 million a year. I don't consider Austin Jackson being up there with, let's say, uh, Jacoby Ellsbury. People might say, what are you, stupid? Jacoby Ellsbury on a other team will give you close to 150 hits. He will steal close to 25 bases or 30. He might hit around 270, et cetera, especially playing in the National League. He might even take that league by storm. He's good defensively. The only reason we bash him with the Yankees is because we already have a Jacoby Ellsbury and Brett Gardner. If you ask me, the only good year they both had together was maybe 2014 or something like that. And we saw the duo of Brett Gardner and Ellsbury creating havoc on the bases. But we all know what happened after that it just didn't work. So that's the positives overshadow the negatives at this point because, like I said, you go after a Corbin or a pitcher you don't have to pay money for. 
you save money for 2019. There's going to be a lot of players available for 2019. So, like I said, I don't consider uh, Ellsbury a Granderson or as Austin Jackson. He is worth about eight million to eleven million a year, if you ask me. To be honest with you, like the real market. So I consider him maybe close to a Kane or whatever that's still on the market. Like I said, Bellsbury's not that bad. He's not that horrible as we make him out to be. So, again, now mainstream media platforms are reporting, oh, now that the Giants are off the table with, let's say, training for Nelsbury, oh, now the Diamondbacks are the best suitors. They were originally the best suitors from the get-go. The only reason why they didn't report on that is because it would link people to my work and Peter's work, you know, competition. They don't want to build the small guy up. But we've been on point for a very long time. Peter from the Salmon 80 source was the first one to talk about Corbin to the Yankees. He was the first one to talk about Cole to the Yankees. And a whole bunch of people, the Astros, swagger jacked that deal away from the Yankees. If it wasn't for the Salmon 80 source and YYP, Garrett Cole wouldn't even be a name this offseason. Like I said, the Astros have a fascination of becoming the New York Yankees. I don't know how because they only have one championship, but I guess Houston over there has a fascination with the Yankees and not the New York Mets. I don't know. For some odd reason, Houston has had a fascination with New York since the Knicks versus Rockets in the 1994 finals. But, like I said, the Diamondbacks going after a reliever doesn't mean they are not out of the market for a closer. The Yankees have a whole bunch of closers. Like I said, the Yankees have everything the Diamondbacks need. The Yankees have everything all MLB teams need, especially the Orioles. The Orioles are pretty dumb if they don't go to the Yanks or the Yanks go to the Orioles and they don't make some kind of dialogue to make a trade because that's pretty dumb. The Yankees have all the young starting pitching the Orioles are looking for. So if you see the Orioles flop with that deal, they're just one of the most dumbest teams out there in professional sports because it was just handed over to them on a silver platter. And you know I'm saying they haven't pulled the trigger. Or maybe they are targeting. Who, who knows? Maybe it'll come out in a week or before a week. And in my previous video with Pete, he outlined a way that the Diamondbacks can dump salary at the same time dealing with the Yankees for Corbin. Another trade possibility, another sequence of a trade where they dump salary and the Yankees get Corbin, where they dump salary in a way where they're able to get J.D. Martinez, which, if you ask me, is better suited for the Diamondbacks and not the Red Sox. He might flop in Boston. Also, do not count the Boston Red Sox out of the U Darvish sweepstakes because if they're going after J.D. Martinez and they don't get him, it's a high possibility that the Red Sox might even get U Darvish. And they'll have an insane starting rotation to go up against the Houston Astros. But the only positive from that is that their offense isn't going to be that great. They'll have all this pitching, but offensively, they're not going to be superior. So then again, that brings me back to the Yankees and Manny Machado the three-way scenario where Yankees get Corbin and Machado. I mean, there's a high possibility you Darvish might become a Red Sox at this point. It's dragging on for a very long time. And let's say another team gets J.D. Martinez. They're going to have that money to go after you Darvish. So that's something to consider. The Astros are not going to be the only MLB team with a super – starting rotation in Major League Baseball, you might see the Red Sox because they were projected in being the Golden State Warriors coming into 2017. And that they didn't live up to the hype, but give them another year, maybe add a U Darvish on their rotation, they'll be deadly. And then that's where you'll see Cashman pull the trigger on that Manny Machado trade. I mean, that's the only way you'll respond to the Red Sox getting a U Darvish. So there you go. This has been Phil from NYYNews.com. Share, like, and subscribe. Tell people about my channel. Hey, follow me on Instagram. Create a relationship with me. I would like to make you famous. If you have a Yankee blog, I'll put you on NYYNews.com. Build you up, and we'll share the success together. We'll make Major League Baseball successful again. 
and everybody wins like that. So I'll check you out.